So you come into Twitter. Twitter's got about 75 Something like that. Engineering, 75 engineers. Uh, t- t- yeah. 75 engineers. You, you then grow that team to more than 350. Um, let's, let's talk about this a little bit because I know there are people in this room that like, including myself that have, that have had at times had a horrible time for hiring one engineer, you know, let alone 300, you know? So like, where, where do you even <laughs> begin? You know, I mean, a lot of coffee <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, and GitHub trolling and LinkedIn. Um, I, I, I can expand on those. So yeah, let's, now, start. let's start right at the beginning. Right. right? Yeah. Um, because I think, you know, there was probably two things that, that were the, one of the, at least aspects engineering wise with Twitter at the time. One was a real underinvestment in people, just the hiring enough people. There were just too many people that had to firefight 24 mm-hmm. seven, had to be heroes. And that, that is brutal to, to go through. And then the other was just a real underinvestment in infrastructure. Okay. So kind of on both of those dimensions, there was massive change in the case of on the people side, we had great people. We just needed more people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and so, um, how do you actually do that? Well, I don't necessarily know if there's a, a secret secret uh, piece, but I'll tell you a couple of things we didn't do. So especially because when I joined, I mean, it wasn't like Twitter was a place for like all engineers wanted to flock to. I mean, the site was down a lot. Um, and so I was like, well, those guys don't care. And it, it actually turned out it wasn't that people didn't want, didn't care. People actually cared a lot, but it just, you know, grossly understaffed. One of the things that I think a lot of startups I see even today do is they, they hire a set of recruiters and then they trust that those recruiters will take care of all these hiring problems for them. Mm. Okay. Now, this isn't a comment that, that recruiters are not needed. Recruiters are great, but recruiters are not the panacea for hiring engineers. The best person to go recruit uh, an engineer is another engineer, oftentimes the founder or the VP of engineering. So a lot of the you know, the, the closing, I should say, yeah. uh, I focused on it at, at Twitter. And I don't know what the specific number is, but I would say probably at least 80%. Okay. Yeah. So that's, that's one. The second is, so it's so an getting, engineer, that one, that one thing is that an engineer needs to close an engineer. Yeah, I really do. And I yeah. think an engineer pulls an engineer out of a company. I mean, look in this day, uh, any great engineer is very gainfully employed, right? Yeah. It's unlikely they're looking. So you, let's look at two different email scenarios. You get an email from you know, Joey recruiter, right? Right. Hey, you know, maybe they spelled your name wrong or right. You know, it's like a lot of caps, right? a lot We've of caps, this, right? Yeah. <laughs> Best job ever. Or you can email, you know, from the woman engineer saying, Hey, I'm working on some really great projects. Like, let's go grab a coffee. Now, I think that in those two scenarios, the co- I mean, most people are like, Hmm, I'll listen. This sounds interesting. Like interesting problems. So right. like we actually did an exercise where we just got audited. Like what are the interesting problems that we're working on? And then let's go actually reach out to people that we think might find interest of working on those problems. Because you think I, you step back, you're like, what does an engineer really want? It's I want to work on tough problems. Yeah. I want to work around great engineers, and I want them to have an impact around okay. that. Okay. You get those three things, everything else kind of falls in place. And yeah, you're you 